Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, solutions for every field. I'm Jessica Cootie, and joining me in studio, sophomore catcher from Nebraska softball, Ava Breadwell. Thanks for joining us. Of course. Thanks for having me. So we've had you on before, but never in studio. So glad to get you in here. You guys are winding down the season, can you believe? Final regular season home series. Well, final oh regular season series. Coming up it's this crazy. I this year flew by. I feel like last year as a freshman it was a little bit different. Like I was kind of getting into swing, the swing of things and kind of learning the ropes. But this year, you know, right right into season, I knew it was coming, and so I don't know. It flew by. It's crazy. Well, we're going to dive into all of that senior weekend. I know you have a special relationship with Courtney Wallace, so I want to talk about all that. But did want to go back to last weekend because I know it was disappointing for you guys. You're right there battling toe to toe with Northwestern, and we've had some people ask about it. So, how did you guys walk away from that series? I mean, this is a team that Northwestern is really, really good, and they're going to probably be hosting a regional, maybe even a super regional. For you guys to go compete there the way that you did, did you, were you able to take a lot away from from this weekend? Yes, definitely. I think this week we're going to use kind of the positives of this weekend. We scored a lot of runs. We um, were able to produce against some top pitching, and we made adjustments really quickly. And I think that we're going to use those positives, and then we're going to learn from the negatives, and we're going to just make some adjustments, and we're ready to come back out this next weekend and fight. There's a lot of teams that wouldn't have come and competed the way that you did after Friday night, but then also after Saturday. So what what is it about this team that you guys – keep coming back and you don't stay down long you, you get right back up yeah we talk about like doing it together and being being in it together and so there's a lot of communication that goes on in the dugout and even like post game pre game um, we're we're always coming up with a solution to to those issues that we had experienced the day before so i think just coming together and making sure that we're all in it we're all in for for making those adjustments and we're just 100% ready to compete and make some changes so you talked about big difference between or felt a little bit different between your freshman and sophomore year what what has been the biggest differences for you um i think last year i was um kind of really just focused on like making sure that i was playing and like trying to produce for my team i feel like this year like i've really kind of been more behind the scenes with some of like the the leadership and just kind of experiencing like the little things that kind of go into the making of the team and so that's been really special to be able to like witness that and obviously you know being really close with Courtney um, just watching her and experiencing her leadership has been like great to learn from instead of just kind of um, playing under her I feel like I'm playing with her and yeah. I'm able to kind of play off of her leadership so that's been really special. You're the Big Ten freshman of the year last year uh, how, how different is that you come in and you know managing a pitching is th being a catcher is not easy i mean how how do you adjust to managing a pitching staff at this level um i think it's really important to create a connection i think that you know um before coming to college you're just kind of catching and you you kind of know your pitcher but here you really have to like know the ins and outs of every single one of their pitches we talked a lot in preseason about like where where the pitchers need to be and how they're feeling when they're at their 100% and then how they're feeling when they're at their 90%, 80% and kind of being able to um, help supplement like those percentages for them and um, being able to get them to that mental level where they're able to perform at their 100%. So I think it's really special to be able to be like a part of the pitching instead of just being a catcher. And obviously we um, are in the bullpens. We're experiencing all that they're going through. So it's just cool to just go through those struggles with them and see them come out on top so why catcher how'd you even get into that um I mean I liked touching the ball every single play I was like I want to be able to like be involved and um I think it's fun to just have the communication piece of it um and now coming to college I really enjoy obviously the connection with my pitchers and even the umpires I like to like talk <laughs> and just like be social so it's nice to just kind of be with somebody and I don't know, just be working with even like the strike zone or and working with my pitchers and communicating that with them. So do you have those conversations with um back there about where certain locations are and, and just the strike zone overall? Because I mean, it is it, it's different from game to game. Yeah, for sure. I think that towards the end of the game, we've developed that connection. And so I'm able to get 
a little, like you know get some more information from them but in the beginning of the game obviously I introduce myself and then I'll say like typically they'll tell you like oh that missed a little bit out and then I might ask like okay how much would you say that was and mm -hmm. you know just thank you and trying to be able to be communicative with them so they can understand where I'm coming from and a lot of times they're really good about like wanting to communicate too like they want to be able to have that relationship so that I can work for them and they can work for me so absolutely mm -hmm. visiting with Ava Breadwell of Nebraska softball uh, when you come in and, and being a catcher, there's so much on your plate as a catcher. I don't know if people understand that. And, and again, just going into every pitch and you're talking in the dugout and, and the game planning and, and all of that and scouting hitters and all of that. And then you have a big role at, in the lineup and, and hitting and you've delivered some, some big plays there too at the plate. How do you balance? Was that hard to balancing both those jobs? I mean, how do you separate that and balance both of those roles? Yeah, I think like making sure that I'm taking in information that I can use because I think sometimes too much information can be too much, like there can be too much information and we're provided with a lot of um, obviously information. We have all the these pitches that these pitchers have thrown. We have all the, you know, at bats that these batters have had and so I think like it really comes down to determining, okay, this is the information that I personally am going to use to the best of my ability and this is the information that is too much, like I guess for me, especially when it comes to being in the batter's box. And then um, same with the pitchers. So based on which pitchers in the game, knowing which information can benefit them, and that might be different for Courtney or for Sarah or whichever, you know, whoever's in the circle. So yeah, for sure. What about you know having that arm that you can throw people out at second? <laughs> what kind of work goes into that to being able to to be a threat where people don't steal on you? Yeah, um, I think that just making sure that. Um, my my dugout really helps me a lot. I mean, they're so loud, and I can hear them um, as soon as the pitch comes in, so I know, obviously, to throw it down. Um, but also having my two other catchers there for me when we're in practice, we're always, like, working to make each other better and communicating on, okay, that transition was a little bit slow. Just try and work there, work, work your transition. Um, so, and then, obviously, Billy and Kate do a great job of making sure they're putting a great tag down. So it's kind of a team team effort there too as well. Growing up, if you know, we're having people listening that have young girls though, what goes into developing that? I mean, is it just reps over and over again, you know, throwing, getting the, the quickness of it, the strength of it, all of that? Yeah, I think definitely making sure that you're putting in work in the weight room too. Um, I think that's really important, especially when you're um, young and you're developing. I think that you need to be strong and same with when you're hitting as well but um, I definitely think focusing on a quick transition because once you can get it into your hand the faster you can get into the hand the faster you can get it down to second base so um, just lots of factors going into that yeah, a, lot of, a lot of details mm -hmm. so yeah for sure about. well you had mentioned Courtney it's senior weekend this weekend Maya Felder Courtney Wallace and, and you obviously have a really special relationship with Courtney Tell us about that and working with her last year and this year and, and what that has been like. And boy, she's had a heck of a load this year, but how special yeah. it's been to, to work with her. Yeah, it's been really special to kind of get to know her. Last year, um, I didn't really catch her as much. I caught her in bullpens, but in game, it was a little bit different. We had Ani, so um, I think that we really had to focus on developing that relationship. And she does a great job of including me and in everything and the bullpens that we're doing. And I feel like I really have gotten to know the ins and outs of her. And she's just, she's awesome. She's so passionate about um, providing and giving everything she has to our program. And I think that that's just really special and she's gonna be really missed. <laughs> what about her willingness to do whatever and how much she's pitched this year and her telling Coach Real, whatever you need me to do, mm -hmm. I'll do it. She's in the lineup a lot of times. Yeah. Uh, just everything that she's taken on and, and being a leader. I mean, how important has she been for this program? Yeah, she's been so important to um, lead everybody. You know, every time we come into the circle, she's always the one making a little comment about, okay, here's what we need to do. Like, let's, let's put pressure on their defense. Um, and I know every single time she turns around and she's looking at like the outfield and the infield, like you can just tell that she's with their, out there with them. And so I think that really helps to bring everybody together and kind of just, I don't know, I feel like it impacts like the effort that's shown with the other players as well because they know that she's got them and they have to have her. And so it's just been really awesome to see her, you know, produce and just it's amazing that she's so passionate about everything. So. 
and Maya Felder, I mean, a, a new addition, what's um, how her role and, and her coming in, and, and she's been huge at the plate, but how important has she been also the, for this Nebraska softball program? Yeah, Maya's awesome. She's definitely um, a leader when it comes to um, just providing an example for all of us, and she's she just always like is focused and mentally checked in, and so I think that um, that's been really important for us. And her coming in last year, she fit in with the team so well, and obviously with the transfer, you know, you never know how that's going to work out, and it's just been really amazing to have her um, on the team and just I don't know everybody's so close, so it's just so special to. Had, have had her, you know, join in, and obviously me and McKinley were coming in. Me, Kim, McKinley, and Kendall were coming in last year as well. So, just being able to kind of lean into her and just do it together has been really fun. So, um, senior weekend this weekend, and just hearing you talk about these seniors and what they they mean to you. There's a lot going on. It's a big weekend for you guys. You, you want to finish out the season strong. Final one at home inside Bowling Stadium. They're give, they have a ton of great giveaways, but to honor those seniors. For you guys as a team, what would it mean for you to have people show up and, and help you guys honor them on their last weekend? Yeah, it means a lot for sure. And um, we're ready to give back to those fans by getting some dubs this weekend and to produce and put on a show for them. So, yeah, I mean, we have amazing fans and obviously they've been showing out all season. So there's no doubt that they'll be there to support us. And um, yeah, we're ready. We're ready to get some wins. We're excited for senior weekend, but the games are definitely the priority. Okay, so I'm going to read these giveaways because they are awesome. So Friday, 5.30 is first pitch. They got a throwback crew neck that they're giving away. Saturday, 1 o'clock, and again, it's Fan Appreciation Weekend. And on Saturday, it's Fan Appreciation Day, free admission, and you're going to get a free Herbie t-shirt. I mean, I did not know. Herbie. I didn't know about the crew neck. Yeah, I want one. on Friday. That's Herbie awesome. Herbie t-shirt on Saturday and belt bags on Sunday, you a belt bag person? I well, I have mine right here, so yes, I am a belt bag person. So how about that? I mean, if that's not, if you don't want to come watch good softball, and this team is so fun to watch, I mean, great giveaways yeah. all weekend long, mm -hmm. and hopefully good weather too. So, uh, and it will have the coverage for you right here on the Huskers Radio Network as well with Nate Roar. But should be a big weekend. Thank you for your time, and best of luck this weekend. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.